All right, uh, I want to do a video here on uh, some some boards that are available now. Um, these are uh, TTGO boards, and this is a Feather M0 Express uh, from Adafruit. Um, and the thing I want to talk about today is using batteries with them. Uh, so all of these have battery charging circuits, and so you can put little 3.7 volt batteries on them and, and make them go. So I don't know if you've seen one of these before, but uh, they have little color displays on them. And um, like I said, they have built-in charging circuits, so they'll, they'll operate on their own little batteries. And they're nice, they're nice little devices. Uh, I, I really enjoy these uh, TTGO. This one has uh, an ESP32 processor, uh, which has Wi-Fi on it. So it's got a built-in Wi-Fi antenna. So this thing has, uh, uh, like I said, Wi-Fi. It's got a color display, uh, which is SPI, so it's nice and fast. Um, it does have A to Ds and D to As. The A to D is okay. It's a 12-bit A to D, but the D to A is, it has two DACs, but they're only 8-bit DACs. But they are true DACs. Um, but, and like I said, it's got two of those. So anyway, it's a, it's a cool little part. It's $6. The reason I really like them is they're $6. Uh, they're USB-C. Uh, they have two buttons, uh, so you can use those in your program. Uh, they run to di digital pins. And uh, yeah, so they're pretty cool. Um, so here's one doing color. Here's one doing a little Pong game. Uh, it's kind of cute. <laughs> anyway. Um, so all of these use a, a similar chip for the battery charging circuit, and it uses a chip uh, similar to this one. Uh, this is the chip that the, the TTGO uses. The Feather uses a chip that's different, but it, it's, it's basically the same. They're SO, what are those things called? SOT23s, they're five, five pin SOT23s though. Um, and so here's the typical charging circuit. It's just uh, they put the battery on them and you have a, a programming resistor that sets how much current uh, the thing will output and you can, you can vary that. And then it does the typical LiPo curve, uh, curves for these things. All right, so when you get them out of the, out of the box, um, what charge current do they operate at? Um, so a friend of mine uh, gave me a heads up that maybe it's not what you want. Um, so the Feather, uh, uses a, a 10K programming resistor, which means um, it's going to have 100 milliamps of charge current. Um, so 100 milliamps of charge current. You need to figure out what type of battery you have. So uh, the reason I have these batteries is they were cheap. I'm a cheap guy. Um, so these were 320 milliamp hours, and I got three of them for $8 free shipping. So that's a pretty good deal. So that's why, that's why I bought these. Three, three, 320 milliamps should keep these things alive for quite a while. And um, they had a good form factor. They're about the same size as the board, so you can, you can hide them. Um, and when you buy the boards, they come with a, um, a little pigtail uh, connector. And so you can wire that into the, uh, into the battery that you, uh, that you obtain. And it plugs into the connector in the back. Okay, so like I said, this one has 100 milliamp uh, programmed into, into it, and uh, these are 320. So when you choose the charge current, the rule of thumb is um, half of that up to 70% of that. So to be safe, it'd be 160 milliamps, and then you can push it a little bit up to uh, 0.7 times that. Um, so 100 milliamps would be very conservative for this part, and it would charge it just fine. It would just take a while, and you'd be very happy. But these parts, uh, for whatever reason, they loaded in a 2K resistor, which means they'll charge with 500 milliamps. And 500 milliamps is way bigger than uh, 320. So these are not good. Uh, do not charge 320 milliamps. So I would say, you know, 800 milliamp hour batteries would be perfect, a perfect match for these boards. Uh, they would be very happy with that. Charge at 500 milliamps, give out 800 milliamp hours. Um, yeah, they'd be, they'd be very happy. Um, so I wanted today to modify one of these boards um, to 
something more reasonable. So I'm going to take out the 2K resistor and I'm going to put in a 4K resistor. So I'm going to drop that um, 500 milliamps down to 250 milliamps. And let me change lenses here so you can see these little tiny little parts. Okay, uh, here's the board. This one's playing Pong. Let me go ahead and show you this one since I've got the camera here. Uh, I'll turn it around here so I can push the button. Uh, this one goes through a, this one goes through the standard. Oh, it's not focused. There we go. Let's do that one again. So you can see it's uh, it's quite fast. It's a nice, it's a nice part. Okay, so uh, we won't be taking a look at the backside. So let me put these over here. Let me go over to this one. Focus there. Okay. So the charge circuit. So here you can see the uh, here you can see the Wi-Fi antenna on the end there. Um, processor, uh, flash RAM. It's got two megabit. Megabytes, megabytes of flash RAM. Um, I think this is the USB controller or the display controller. I don't know. Anyway, uh, the part that we're interested in is way down here in a corner, and uh, it has an LED right in the smack dab little corner here. When you're charging, it's solid, and then uh, when it's done, it turns off. And the load resistor, or the programming resistor, let me get something to point with. The programming resistor is right here. This one right here. So it's on pin five of this package. So the two, this is a little 2K. Is it that one or this one? This one. This, this one here. This one is a 2K, 2K resistor. And it is just a resistor to ground. So it is an 0603 package, which is quite small. Luckily, the back end of this capacitor, this capacitor is across 3.3 in ground. So you could just bridge between the, the pin five here and, and this part here and put in a larger, a larger resistor. And I probably will do that. So the first, uh, first thing will be, can we, can we remove this, uh, can we remove this uh, resistor without doing too much damage? So let me, uh, let me give that a try. I don't think I need a hot air station for this. I think I can just use a, an iron and heat that up and pull it off and then uh, tack, in a, uh, tack in another resistor here. Um, I think I'll have to do that off camera because it's too difficult to do things out of the microscope and everything. So let me, let me go do that and we'll come back. Okay, uh, I was successful. Uh, this is... Uh, this is where the resistor used to be. And uh, so I just heated up and uh, I, uh, so, these are so small, if you just put a tie iron up there, the whole part heats up and you can just pull it right off. And then what I've done is I've, uh, I've, 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 jammed, a, uh, I've jammed a part in there. Uh, it's, a little hard, it's a little hard to see, but uh, let's see, let me, let me tilt it up. Let me, just a second. Okay, I think you can see that better. Uh, the top of the part is black, so I've just kind of put a uh, 0805 part in there. And like I said, if, as long as you get it to touch pin five of that uh, SOT23 part and uh, the uh, capacitor that's sitting there is at ground also. So now you've got a, a, a 4K to ground. I didn't have any 4Ks in my uh, collection. I have a 4.7 in there now, so uh, a little bit lower, but uh, now it's a, uh, now it's a good charge. Uh, now it's a good charge charge current. So anyway, there's the hack. If you do buy some of these boards, if you have, like I said, if you have an 800 milliamp hour battery, don't worry about it. If you're using a battery smaller than that, you might want to lower the charge current, and that's how you do it.